uh, the question and the place of culture is one uh, that must preoccupy our minds. They came and told us that our culture meant nothing and we believed them and unfortunately we still believe them. So today when we are gathered here to commemorate one of the great African stalwarts, Omuka Makabareta, we must ask ourselves fundamental questions, uncomfortable questions. And those questions relate and rotate around the question of the thing that is called development. What is this thing called development? I and I still believe that in our understanding of development, we must recognize that development is about our ability to recognize humanity in ourselves. It is those civilizations that have claimed that they were developed, that have visited great pain upon the world. The Europeans tell me throughout the ages, which other civilization has visited pain upon humanity like the European tribes? Whether those tribes are Germans, whether they are British, whether they are Italian, whether they are English, which, whether they are the Belgians, there is no civilization other than civilizations from Europe that have visited pain upon others like they have. When in 1914, the European tribes who are fighting amongst themselves, they called it the World War. When they fight themselves, they call it World War. From where they sit, what they do is the world. When they fought again, between 1939 and 1945, they did not call it tribal war, they call it World War. And we were inducted into those wars. They came to us and they told us that our cultures were not good so that even today as I speak to you instead of addressing you in Kiswahili or Kinyoro or Luganda, they have captured our tongues that I'm now speaking to you in a foreign tongue. I look forward to the day. When in an assembly such as this, I'll address you in the Kiswahili language. I look forward to that day. I look forward to the day when we shall have totally liberated ourselves. That we will be able to appreciate that indeed when we talk about development, we talk about the totality of culture. In Kiswahili they say, Mwachamila nimtumwa. He or she who abandons his or her culture is a slave. And there is a sense in which we remain enslaved. How do we remain enslaved? Just look at your names, including my very own. Look at it. Who is this individual that is called Patrick for whom I am named? Who is he? Why is it that on the day that I was baptized, they could not allow me to use my local name? Why? Why is it that when we are referring to ourselves, we refer to ourselves as Anglophone, as Francophone, as Lucifer? And right now we are even always in the business of referring to ourselves as other funds, soon we will be Sinophon. This is what we are doing to ourselves on a daily basis in the name of development. When we run our governments and their university professors here, when they teach political science, oh, what science do they teach? They teach the ideas of somebody from the United States, they talk about Max Weber, they talk about Adam Smith, they talk about John Austin, they talk about H.A.L. They don't talk about Kabarega, they don't talk about Mutesa, they don't talk about Shaka the Amazulu, 
they don't talk about us because we are totally dominated so that even the universities that we run the law that we teach the political science that we teach the history that we teach the geography that we teach is so eurocentric that on this day when we remember Omuka Makabarega, we must also exercise the spirit of slavery, mental slavery, that we may welcome a new spirit of freedom. Because if we don't, we will be dominated throughout the ages. You know, as I talk about development now, I think about this continent, this continent that has known slavery, the Omukama himself was taken away from the comfort of his kingdom and spirited to seashells. He stayed there for over two decades. When they had neutered the society, then they allowed him to come back. He did not get home. He died on his way. But this country for a long time did not even recognize him until later in the day. But we still recognize Prince Charles with a name in the middle of Kampala. I look forward to the day when such names shall no longer exist in the streets of Kampala. When I think about this continent, and I think about how we were colonized. And I think about how we regained our independence. And no sooner had we regained our independence than we adopted the very same things that we inherited from the white colonizers. So that if you go to the Ugandan parliament, the Kenyan parliament, the Ghanaian parliament, the Zimbabwean parliament, the Nigerian parliament, as the great African-American John Hendrick said, they are mimicry of what the colonizers left for us. And he says, and I agree, we will never succeed on the basis of that kind of organization. We were told, and we are still told, that in order to run a government, in order to run a judiciary, you must run it in the manner that the British taught us to do, complete with the manner in which they dressed. In order to run a parliament, we must run a parliament like they did, and our speaker must still wear some woolen white thing, which people stopped wearing many years ago, but we still wear.